Hello, we'll break something into pieces today and we will use the bullet solver for this. Bullet is one of three currently, we're writing Maya 2018, currently uh, three physical solvers as they are called, gravity systems basically, force systems. And one of them is bullet and it's been neglected a little bit because of mash which is so a, such a shooting star. I've got lots of MASH tutorials. It's a fantastic system. But BULLET is fine as well. And this time we'll use BULLET in order to break up uh, a torus. Well, we can go to Polygon Modeling and use a torus here. But let's just for fun use a NURBS torus. The NURBS torus, it doesn't matter how the resolution is, how many uh, spans it has, because the cutting process will just ignore the detail of the geometry but we can uh, go to the uh, the component mode and maybe deform it slightly so we get a little bit more interesting shape here by the way i see all these orange and red things because i press the key b and i press it again i can um, move individual points as opposed to when I press B it's a soft selection tool so all the others in the neighborhood will translate accordingly only this one in the real space here a dimension and all the others less and less the further away they are anyway that's uh, off topic really um, I just wanted to deform that torus slightly to make it more interesting so I press F8 and then I'm back in the object mode. So let's break this into pieces. It's typically a modeling thing, but we find an elegant way to cut it automatically in the special effects section here, actually under effects. So with this object selected, we go to effects, shatter. Shatter breaks it into pieces. We could use the default settings. We'll break the torus into five parts. But uh, let's uh, choose the option box instead. We have crack shatter, solid shatter, and surface shatter. Basically, surface shatter uh, just keeps this object as a surface, a thin skin. And the uh, shards will eventually become thin skin object as well. So. Uh, Let's go to Solid Shatter, which creates uh, self-contained pieces uh, after the sh uh, shattering process. Instead of five, let's make the system create 10 or, say, 20. And we want to hide the original surface. It doesn't matter. You can hide it afterwards. Well, but this is just quite practical. Now we apply it, and it takes longer than a second, not because of the actual calculation, I think, but also because this is a NURBS surface and it has to be converted into a mesh, that is a polygon uh, surface structure. Uh, so the whole process takes a couple of seconds, so um, be patient. Now it's done. In the outline you see grayed out the original torus and here you see a group. You can open it and here you have 20 I guess one, two, three, five. I don't know why that selection is so different, but it's basically 20 pieces we have. Shard number three is that one. And if you invoke this uh, thing again, this uh, pro process, it will create other another distribution of the shards. It, uh, you can see it here under the seed value. Seed always means there's some randomization going on. I reset the settings here so next time we have a clean start in case we need it again. Not in this tutorial, although. Okay, now um, we want to make them dynamic. And uh, we can select them all, select the whole group and make the whole group dynamic. Um, but um, let's see how we do this. Go to Bullet and Active Rigid, rigid Body would be the the way to go you think so let's make a rigid body out of it uh, what it will do is the whole torus falls all the way down and does nothing else we don't see the individual parts separate so let's undo this 
and instead select all the objects here instead of selecting the group and then we go to active rigid body again and now we have these little things here uh, which all uh, already look like an explosion thing and here we go that's the explosion we want I undo this again because there's a classic way to do this and this is selecting this group and going to bullet and creating a rigid set it basically does the same but one step one procedure less so um, of course uh, once it's in the force in the gravity dynamics you can apply fields turbulence or, uh, or other effects or wind or radial forces which d uh, drag the uh, uh, shards back into the center etc and now just for the fun of it let's create a light like a sky dome light and render this using motion blur explosion done I think a light in the center of the scene would not be too bad create a point light sits there Happy shattering.